back to the Game Day Squad Rugby League show, joined by Josh and myself as always. And aren't we keen to be back, Josh? Another big week. How did your squad go? You know, I started pretty strong. Yeah? My squad started strong and then I just started falling down the table. That's what we like to hear because Josh is already up 1-0. So as you guys know, we're both quite competitive. And if I'm down 2-0 early, I'll be disappointed. So I'll just, I'll just go out there and say it, Josh. I'll say it from now. Yeah, go for it. Here I am on Game Day Squad. I was in the top 100, ranked 97 this uh, this week. I scored 876. Yeah. It's good for you. 1-1? One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. Yes. Yeah, I, I uh, scored 807, All ranked right. 142nd. It's not good for me. Not good at all. I'm not, not impressed with the strong start. I was in the top 30 after a couple games. And just to plumber like how I did, it's not great. Not great. I need to, I need to build my... Squad back up. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, it's lucky it's quite physically. Week. Yep, and that's the beauty of Game Day Squad, right? Every single week it's a new competition, but I can't complain because uh, the competition's level here with us. 1-1, one, one. I'll right. take it. Cracking the top 100 was a pretty cool feeling. Uh, and then I had a look at who was first, the XRP effect. So shout out to you, 1150. Hopefully XRP uh, goes up too. they got some money in that. Yeah, hopefully he's listening to us. Yeah, but um, <laughs> mate, to get over 1,100... Uh, it was quite an unpredictable week. I think a few things went the way that we sort of predicted, but yeah. there were still some unpredictable performances. So I wonder what um, what pods he or she had, um, which is something we'd probably go into a bit a bit later as well. But mm. before we get into strike space misses, it's always good to go back on our predictions, and maybe it's just good because maybe it's just my my week this week because <laughs> I said Nico Hines will score over sixty five points. Yes, and he did. He scored seventy eight. He's in my squad. Happy days. Um, I mentioned the Sharks averaging a winning margin of 17 and a half against the Dogs. They went on and what ended up winning by? 23? No. Uh, a bit less, I think. 19? 19. Yeah. Um, so over 17 and a half and, and Hines had a day out, 78 points scored there. So um, that's, yeah, glad I got the prediction right. Unfortunate for your doggies, yeah. but I think Hines, if you take his score individually, that's the difference between your squad and my squad this week, quite literally. Yeah. Literally. So... Great performance from from Nico. Um, we said that he was in a void the, the previous two weeks. He wasn't scoring as well. Uh, the previous week, sorry. But, you know, we said to, to play him this week in your squad if you've got him and turns out to be a good decision. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, still for the Sharks, I feel like they're still a bit clunky in attack. So I think they're still going to find their feet in terms of which side they want to, you know, dominate the field on. You know, we saw Ronaldo yeah. bag the try. He's, you know, he got a try assist as well. So they're like they're like the left side. We saw Nico Hines come to the left more in this game against the Bulldogs. I'm not sure if they're just picking out key defenders or yeah. that's just that they want to try that this year. But um, yeah, Nico Hines looking good for for the coming weeks. Yeah. For my for my prediction, yeah, how'd you go? Yeah, I said uh, my mum was the Cowboys have won their last two games against Newcastle Knights when Deedon has scored and Deedon back another try. Mate, and Tom Deedon. Thanks to his halves partner, uh, Chad Townsend, they got the win. One point in the extra time. Yeah, that was actually a crazy game. 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 Oh, wait, actually, no, we can't even say that. Nah, Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne mate, you Xavier know, Coates, You know it's a great week when an extra time field goal didn't get game Match of the round, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, that try was unbelievable. We could probably be here talking about it all day, all yeah, like, show. But, like, but you, just, you just picture it. It's he unbelievable. He just defied the odds, like. He dove from six meters out. They um like yeah. Fox League came out and said he, he dove from six meters out. And it's like the frame of which the shot was taken where Coates get like gets yeah, off the ground. Yeah, yeah. The try line's not in sight. That's not that's not normal. So that's not normal. But watching it live, I said there's no way he scored that. Yeah. And when it was in slow mo, I think the anticipation was crazy. I was just waiting in slow mo. Yeah. And the way everyone reacted to it too. Yeah. It got reposted, went everywhere. Guy's probably got the biggest head now. I so. mean, I mean, apparently he, he trains every afternoon to do that. Well, probably not every afternoon, maybe every once a week. Yeah, I heard that actually. I was saying in training, oh, I thought you know, I train for this stuff, and it, pay, it paid off. I mean, he did it up against Dallin, right? With yeah, Tennessee Lesniak, yeah, absolutely. who's known for that stuff too. So, and he went down. He went low and hard to try to like sw- swipe him out. Um, I feel like he did the right thing, thing but you just can't expect yeah, that. Yeah, but I reckon that just helped Coast fly <laughs> even more. Yeah. But like any other but what, human. What do you do? Do you expect him to be jumping that high? No, but I reckon any other human would go flying into the gates. Yeah. Like if it's any other winger. Like he just but took Coates the hit. is just built different. He literally took the hit and just, you can just flew. Maybe we'll fly air coach to Magic Ground. 
might have buy Coz of a squad. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't want to get caught on the hype train, yeah, but what we will not. jump into is strikes, spares, misses, and backing on from my uh, prediction for the week, I've got Nico as my strike. Now, I had a couple of strikes this week. I don't want to flex, but you were flexing hard last week. Yeah. Isaiah Yo performed really well. He was close to being my strike this week, but I want to just highlight Nico Hines because obviously everyone talks about the half position and should you have pods in your team or should you just go for the absolute stars in your team? For me, Nico's a player where when Sharks are going average, he's scoring well. When Sharks are going yeah. well, he's going to score great. Yeah. And, and we, we saw that. They, they played a good game. It wasn't anything fancy. It wasn't anything spectacular. I didn't think they were going to score, what, 25 points as a, as a collective team yeah. by the way that, that, that the first half went. But, you know, they, they found a way and, and Nico stood up. 78 points, four goals, one field goal. Um, I felt like there was still more to be done by Nico in attack. And still, he got yeah. 78 points. It's like... The man's going to get points. He's he's my strike, and he's mainly the strike because we'll be worried based off what he did in the first week. Going into the second week, we're like, oh, what what to do here? We'll, we'll back him. He's up against the dogs. We read the stats. Um, stats don't lie, and neither does Nico Hines at Shark Park. So 78 points, mate. You're my strike, Nico. Yeah, just on that. I reckon back on what we were saying before, he, Nico Hines has to take control of this squad just so he can, you know, as he shoot as a halfback, but Trindle just has to stay on his side and, you know, control his side, but Nico can take all the kicking. Like every yeah. bit of the kicking has to go to Nico. We saw there was two or three kicks from Trindle. Out the, I think one out on the full, one was just uh, short. wasn't wasn't a deep kick and uh, it ruins their yeah, momentum. Yeah, it ruins really. their momentum. And Nico, when Nico gets the ball in his hands more, they look better. And yeah. obviously people who have his squad, it's better for them too. Yeah, so when Nico runs his squad, yeah. he helps our squad. Yeah. So just think of it that way. Literally. Hopefully you're watching Nico. <laughs> Who's okay, your strike? Onto my strike. My player that was my transfer market fine last week, and that's Payne Haas. Yeah. I mean, 59 minutes. As you can tell, I didn't have a great week, but Payne Haas was my standout. He, 59 minutes, a bit of a knee injury, so which makes his score even, you know, even better. With his 15, 19 runs for 184 meters. Guy's a weapon. He's a weapon. Literally, six tackle breaks. Six tackle breaks. And I just think he's a player you must have in your squad, especially if he if he gets to do his little niggle in his knee, you need to have him. He's a player that is a must-have up front. Yeah. The forwards. Because if he sticks out in the 60, you know, 65 minute mark, there's a bit more minutes, you know, he's going to give you a decent score every single round. Yeah, his output's insane from what he, what he provides. 100%. What did he end up scoring for you? He ended up scoring 54 points. But then I have him as a platinum card. So okay, so having that platinum strike. card is just definite. It's just a definite card for me to have, unless they're up against, yeah. you know, a very strong side in in that week. So you know, I'm happy with Haas. I'm going to keep him in my squad, and yeah, that's why he's my strike. Fair enough. Didn't score the most points, but still yeah. a bit of a flex that you've got that card. Yeah, so I think it's just the card. Maybe I'll have to hit the transfer market. Uh, <laughs> But I'll, I'll take the win against you yeah. this this week. But um, I'll move on to my my spare. Um, my spare is James Tedesco. Obviously, everyone knows I'm a mad Roosters fan. My favorite player. Um, I've got the silver card, so maybe a bit of Roosters bias there. But I thought up against Manly, he had a really good game uh, in Vegas. I thought he'll he'll back it up for us, and he did. He did back yeah. it up. The reason why he's my spare is because I've got him as a silver card. So yeah. he scored uh, 64. I ended up with 70. Yeah. Um, one try, two try assists, Teddy back to his old ways, running a whole bunch of meters and, and helping the team out, get the ball over the line and even bagged one himself. So 70 points for a silver card, it's good. Yeah, it's it's not good. it's not great, but it's yeah. good. That's why that's why he's in my spare category. I'm um, not sure what I'm going to do this week. We do face the Rabbitohs in a rivalry match, but the Rabbitohs are looking a bit weaker than, than the last couple of times we've met them. So yeah. I think he might be a play again. Um but yeah, just got to monitor that. The silver card's tricky because it eats up into your into your budget a bit more, yep. and you just need to tell like, is it worth the upside, or you better off a bronze card and then upping it elsewhere. So yeah, that's that's. I mean, it sounds more like a strike. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've just got him in spare because I was just so impressed with um with what Nico did when visually it didn't look like he did too much. Yeah, facts. I mean, that's probably why your team scored well. Probably don't have many low cards. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I, mean, well I, I don't want to reveal all my secrets. Back onto my squad. Um, Harry Grant is my spare. You know, decent decent hit out, 39 tackles, scored me 49 points. You know, I mean, you expect it. You expect a yeah. solid score from Harry Grant. 
It's just more the fact that if he's game style right now, he's not looking to play make as much, just, you know, sending the boys up the middle, left and right. Um, not taking as many dashes out. Out of dummy half? Yeah, no, he's not scooping as much, you know, none of those uh, short plays at, at dummy half. More more the inside-outside ball from Melbourne right now with, with Pappy. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe a different game plan, maybe, you know, new plays in the squad from Melbourne, you know, looking for different tactics, you know, people are probably predicting how you're going to scoop and, you know, give that short ball. So maybe how goes looking like a different player this year or maybe not. I'm going to give him a few more weeks in my squad just to see how he goes because, you know, he's Harry Grant, probably the best yeah. hooker well, in there. Yeah, Harry would be a popular choice for everyone, yeah, right? For but sure. I just thought, obviously, he's a safe and liable option. But for me, I quite I quite disagree about um, keeping him for – I mean, you can obviously keep him yeah. in the squad. That's the beauty about it, but you don't have to play him every single week. Yeah, facts. The thing is, just given that he's – got a different spine around. Like he, it's not Pappenhausen, yeah. uh, Munster, Hughes and himself. It's been different in round one, different in round two. It's going to be different in round three now. And because he's actually been promoted to captain by yeah. Bellamy, I just feel like Bellamy would be like, look, mate, simplify a game, do what the team needs. Don't worry about dashing out and trying to be creative and do your own yeah. thing. Like this is what I need from you. Um, and, you know, the instability around the spine, it's like, mate, just, just focus on your job. Don't do any extras. So I think that holds him back from scoring attacking points. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what I'm seeing, and which is why he's my spare. Just you know, got to go to have a look, and you know, obviously he's the top tier for uh, yeah, he's still a top the tier hooker. So um, yeah, up to you, coaches, decide if you're going to play him or not. But um, my miss is Lukey. I, I, I feel I feel bad to put him in the miss category uh, because he did he did get off come off early with yeah, an injury. So, course, yeah. but eight, but the fact that he's my my uh, miss is because I've got a gold card and oh. was expecting a lot. Uh, so to score eight points is a waste of my gold card. So that's just why he's, he's my miss. And damn, yeah, that's my hard just, one. Uh, I think I'll just move on from that because that's just neg- full negative vibes. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, here's my miss here, and I'm pretty sure with my miss last week, which is why he's going to be leaving my squad. Who, who are we saying bye to, we're Josh? Going, we're going Alex Johnston. Yeah, coming up against the Roosters this week. Yeah, see you later, yeah, mate. It's just, it's just not the go. They're not looking great in attack. Obviously, Ilias is out this week. Uh, they have Hawking starting. So that left side could be the attacking side. But I just see the Roosters had a strong strong line of defense against Manly. Even though Manly won, they still look strong. Yeah. We let in one sloppy try. And apart yeah. from that, they would have scored yeah. two tries. Yeah. But back on Johnson's performance, yeah, just not getting involved enough. Same as yeah. last week. He just doesn't come in, into field. Hard carries, you know, no, no tackle breaks, no offloads, not making many tackles, and obviously the most important thing, no no tries coming. Yeah. In. So and that he was a bit of a pod for you, right? You yeah. wanted to play him in a way to yeah. get points, thinking exactly. he'd score a lot of tries, and it just That's unfortunately fine. hasn't yeah. eventuated. Well, fortunately, as a Roosters fan, right? <laughs> yeah. But we talk about game day squads, so I, mean, I don't want to jinx your squad. Yeah, I don't want to jinx us too. Oh, by the way, you guys lost this week. Remember, I said we can't put the dog's hat up uh, in case the fans are wondering. <laughs> We, we can't put that up after a loss. Uh, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Belmore this week. You know the true spiritual right. home against Titans. So we're gonna win we, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But um, moving on to on the radar now. Um, we like to pick out two players who are on the radar. Some based off like their performance in the previous couple of weeks and and who we'd look to bring in, or some someone that we'd look to bring in, or just have a look at based mm-hmm. off their matchup coming up this week. So I'll start with Ryan Pappenhausen. Two tries, seven tackle breaks, eighty-one points. In a team where we just spoke about Melbourne Storm, where their spine's a bit up and down because they, you know, they haven't had a consistent four plays in the spine and a few injuries, and now Jerome Hughes suspended. We don't know what it's going to look like, but Papahazen looks like he's getting back to his fine form. He's still not goal kicking, and probably Meany will probably have the duties yeah, for the majority yeah. of the season. Probably wouldn't surprise me. But to score eighty-one points and to look as fresh as he did, it looked like he didn't miss much footy last year. When in reality is he missed almost everything. So. Yeah, he's, he's de- definitely on the radar, someone to keep an eye on. I'm not saying you bring him in yeah. to your squad right now, but you don't want to take your eyes off Pappenhausen. Yeah, for sure. Especially like I reckon he's that like, he's the Melbourne's key player. I mean, you can talk about Hughes, Munster, Harry Grant. It's just Pappenhausen has that spark that can that can win people teams grand, uh, squads grand finals. And it's just like yeah, he just he just a player that I'm looking for too. Yeah. yeah. Well he passes the eye test too. Like when you watch your Melbourne play, Pappy gets the ball and everyone's like, oh, Pappy. Yeah. Like, 
no one's going crazy when yeah, you yeah, such yeah. as the ball or which way Grant's going to go. It's like when Pappenhausen gets the ball, you see him running in the background. You're like, oh, look. Like yeah, we, be, yeah. we find ourselves pointing it out whenever we're watching the footy. So. Yeah, you're bound for a tackle break or a line break offside. Yeah. Like, pretty much like nearly every play. So he's a, he's a point scoring machine when he's on. And it looks like early, it's early days still. That's why he's on the radar. Um, we don't want to jinx him with an injury or anything, but mm. definitely someone who, who I'd put on, on the radar. Um, who um, have you gone with? I've gone with Luke Brooks. Brooksy. You know, a player many people wouldn't wouldn't be thinking about previously before this season, and you know just looks so strong, yeah. especially in a game where DC didn't dominate, he dominated, which is crazy. But well, not crazy because they changed Brook, uh, Brookvale to yeah. to Brooksvale. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, Brooksvale, Brooksvale <laughs> Oval. So put in Google Maps. Yeah, I mean directions. It, sent, it might send you to Tiger Town by accident. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, he's he's but yeah he just he's turned heads. Yeah, yeah, a like, lot of people are now seeing what he can do, especially when he has players like Tom Trevojevic on his left and right. Yeah. You know, it makes him a bit more dangerous. With Brooks' speed, you know, over the first 10 metres, Brooks is quick. So, you know, he's quite quite the player to, you know, break a tackle, you know, get a qu- little sneaky try, try assist, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's in my squad in the next coming weeks. Well, close to the line, we're going to see him with a, a lot of a lot of forced dropouts. Yeah. I think he's got that good short kicking game to yeah. him as well. Um, and I love the short pass he's got as well. We saw him put um, Ben Trebojevic over in, in that first week in Vegas. Yeah. So, you know, Brooks close to the line. I don't think they're going to go to Cherry uh, as often as they've done in the past, mainly. Well, yeah, I think Cherry is more that he's going to try and play Ola Kowatsu short, as we saw about 45 <sighs> times. It's not going to work all season. Ola Kowatsu is someone who should be on my radar. <laughs> it's looking like, well, I have a gold Ola Kowatsu. Anyways, <laughs> back to me. Gold Ola Kowatsu <laughs> and, and still couldn't get the dub this week. Yeah, that's right? pretty bad. Anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, so if if their game plan on the right is to play short to Ola Kowatsu all season, it's just going to limit them, mainly. Yeah, so that's why Brooks comes in and that's why he's on your radar, I guess, we because he's Brooks, a great attacking Brooks option. Brooks did sweep right, so it's another another positive where he wants to get involved. So a player like him compared to, I know two different positions, but like Johnson, Alex Johnson, Johnson's not wanting to get into the middle, take the hard carries. You know, those, those meters and, you know, post-contact meters gives you points. Yeah. So end of the day, Brooks wants to get involved. He wants to lead the team. Mate, take it. Yeah. Take it with both hands, mate. My second player on the radar is Jack Wyden. Now, this one might be a bit left of field, but um, you've got to have some players that are a bit different in the squad. Yeah. And like we said, on like we don't want to be repeating this every single week, but on the radar doesn't mean someone that you need to bring into your team, it's, uh, to your squad. It's just mm-hmm. someone that you need to look out for That's right. to see how they perform in their team to see if it's worth bringing them into your squad. That's how we view it. And for Jack Wyden is just a, a natural freak. Like mm. he can play almost any position in the back line. I mean, if you had to chuck him in the forwards, you could probably do a job probably. there. Uh, so just he's so strong, like the brute strength, the, the ability to to make a tackle and make it an effective mm. tackle. Doesn't really miss too many um, tackle-breaking opportunities left, right, and center. And now that he's playing in the centers, we could see potential line breaks, yeah. try assists, line break assists. Like he could be screaming with attacking points. Um, and he's someone who can definitely take the tough carries. We didn't see him do too much of it at, in the 5 eighth position, but now being uh, center, he'd have to. And he's someone that the defense would see probably bouncing off him. Yeah. Off them, rather. So we could see potential points come out of him, especially because Souths are 0-2 to start the season. Yeah. Um, they need someone to sort of break the game. He could be that guy. So I'd keep an eye on him just to see how he performs and how Souths use him. Yeah. Um, definitely not bringing him to my squad, but someone who I have to keep an eye on. It's definitely very interesting because he literally could play anywhere. He in, could. In we don't squad, know what he's going to do. In the squad that's shuffling around. So I was talking to someone today and they said, like, could you imagine Latrell Mitchell in the centers and Wyden fullback? Like, it's it's. A, I wouldn't say Wyden's a fullback, but like he like he could, he could literally play anywhere. That's the thing he can do. Like, we, we don't want to overhype him. Yeah, I mean, he's been around for a while, but he's so versatile. Yeah, and he just he's just like yeah, whatever sort of guy. Yeah, on the footy field, um, and he's just so effective everywhere. He just does a job, and he's just. I think people forget how how tall and how strong he is. Oh, for sure. Like, he's a physical threat, so... Athlete. And he's fit. He's yeah, super fit. For sure. Um, so, yeah, he's on my radar just to see how Souths use him. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, a lot of people are looking out for him, especially on debut. Yeah, club so, debut. Hopefully he has a quiet one. On to the next. Appy. Appy's my next. Okay. First game. Did a cracker job. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's bad to try. Goal kicks. Goal kicks. I mean, which is putting pressure on Harry Grant as my starting in my squad 
which is why he's in my spares, Harry Grant. So happy, man. He's probably second best right now in the in the Yeah, league. after one match. Yeah, after one match. I mean, put a bit of pressure on him, but in terms of a player who's playing 80 minutes. Do, that's what I was going to ask yeah. you. He's on your radar. Do you think he'll be playing 80 minutes week in, week out? Oh, I think he needs to, especially for the Tigers. He needs to be playing yeah. 80 minutes if there are a chance to, you know, win these games, these tight rate, tight games. And obviously Galvin's the new 5'8", so – a little bit of inexperience there, so you know, the, as much experience they have on the field, which they need. You need stability in your spine, yeah, especially yeah. in Appy, a player who's been there, done that, won grand finals, and a, a player that having your squad. I reckon in the coming weeks, he'd be a player you need. Wow, that's um, that's bold. Yeah, I reckon. I rate it though. Yeah, I, I mean, do. I do rate it. But I mean, for me, it's just like it's not a no-brainer. But it's like he's just he's just bound to score points. Week in, week out. Look Especially with a goal kick. A hooker yeah. and a goal kick, I mean, yeah. It's a, it's a win-win. Yeah. Like, because he knows he's going to make tackles because unfortunately Tigers are going to be defending a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then if, if, he, uh, if he gets Literally. the opportunity to, to goal yeah. kick, it's, a, it's extra points. It's a bonus. So you're right. If he plays 80 minutes, it helps. And, and hooker's a hot position and everyone talks about it. And oh, we're speaking yeah. about Harry being average. I'm um, not sure how Cook's going to go with South as well. And it's like, oh, what are we looking at? Who are we going to play? Yeah, you can just imagine like a gold appy week in, week out, especially like not especially not when Tigers have the bye, obviously. But yeah, you just have him every week. I don't obviously, know. Obviously, I need to score tries. But, you know, a player you can rely on and just set and forget. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. You disagree. I disagree. I, mean, I, that, I'd put yeah, him, I wouldn't put him at, at set and forget yet. Yeah, I'd okay. like to see how they continue to attack. Defense, yeah. no problem, but I've got to see how they continue to attack to, to sort of put him there. I mean, my hook and option is Brandon Smith, and at this rate, I don't even know if the bloke can play 50 minutes. <laughs> they call him the block of cheese, but he might be eating a couple blocks of cheese at the moment. He can't he can't stay on the field long enough. He's uh, got to shred the kegs, but we, we move on. Stats don't lie. Before we get into the fan questions, which we've got a couple that we're, uh, we're obviously super keen to answer all the fan questions, and we love yeah, that yeah. you guys have put them in. Um, they've, they've come from the Discord this week, all Let's of them, go. so... Keen, keen to, to go through those, but stats don't lie. I'm going to pull up my magic, my magic board here. <laughs> it's another one on the Sharks. Don't call me boring. I did one on the Sharks That's last great. week. You the, love the Sharks. Uh, look, the prediction ended up being right. <laughs> Nico's the savior for my squad. Wow. Sharks have won their last four against the Tigers. Average winning margin of 26. Last time against the Dogs was average winning margin of 17 and a half. They That's won by 19. Average winning margin of 26. Could they win by 30? That's rough. Nico Hines in your squad. I don't know if I need to make a rap, a song. I don't know what I need to do. Also, look, I don't want to um, – this this plays into my transfer market segment, so I don't know. Do you want me to push it now or I'll save it? I'll just save it. Save but it? Like, I think the last four weeks you've been talking about Nico Hines. <laughs> he's, a, he's a hot topic. That's true. <laughs> it, it's my it's my stamina. The stats don't like averaging 26 points That's as a unreal. winning margin. That's unreal. Not 26 points scored against them, 26 points winning margin. You so gotta, so yeah. Tigers are getting pumped. You've got to hope for Tigers fans that their team can... No, we don't worry about fancy. That's one thing we don't do. <laughs> we worry about Roosters fans and Dogs fans, <laughs> <True>. right? <laughs> and no one else. Everyone, you need to worry about your squad. We, it's yeah. not good to be selfish in yeah, life, true. but when it comes to game day squad, you need to have the best squad possible. Yeah. My squad needs to be better than Josh's and vice versa, right? Yeah, he wishes. There's no time. Look, there's no time to be all friendly. It's true. It is very true. You need to compete. Everything's a competition. You need to coach mate, and so. compete, as they say. Yep, correct. Coach and compete. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the Sharks. I'm looking at the stats, and they don't lie. Averaging a 26 point winning margin against the Tigers, who they face this week with Nikora out. Well, so I, that's not. It's Heinz' go to man. So the ball's going bang straight to the center. Yeah, I mean, I think you're saying right side. I'm saying right side historically against the Tigers. Yeah. They do well. Uh, Ramian and Katoa. Oh, do you want to tell them what you read up about Ronaldo? And- yeah, so the last few, he's only scored three tries in their last four games against the Tigers, which doesn't sound too bad, but oh, yes. considering they've scored like 60 tries <laughs> against them, it's not the best. It's actually um, wild. Yeah, it's actually wild. Not 60, guys. That was a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, but... Like 20 something, yeah, yeah. Tw- let's say 20 tries. Yeah. Um, he's only scored three out of the 20. So, um, as a winger, as a winger, you know, that you seem like he scores yeah. a lot of tries for the Sharks. So, if you're looking for a pod, I'd go, I'd go Ramian or Katoa this week. I'd actually go the other side, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, what's your what's your stats? Don't lie. What have you got for your stats in this segment? Yeah, my stat 
was done if it <laughs> well you're looking at me like it's gonna be a shark no, spine i'm but, gonna make fun of you back it actually was but then i i forgot that i wrote this down and then i so you made this bloke makes fun of me and then wants to talk about the sharks as well no, go on josh no, i actually don't even have one <laughs> i don't have one it was definitely a sharks player <laughs> written on this board somewhere he's, he's covering the board for me it was definitely something about a shark no i don't have a any. sharks player shark team shark stat let's just say the bulldogs no, I was trying to think of a stat. It's definitely about the Sharks, but that's what, that's what I mean. When you made fun of me yeah, even then about funny. competition as well, <laughs> look how competitive he's getting when he realized that he made fun of me and his stat was about a Sharky. So yeah. let's, let's jump on to the, the fan questions. And uh, the first one, Josh. Pull them up. Here we go. What's, we got this one last week as well, and I think you guys need to be a bit more specific with it. We got one saying what's smarter, playing an extra hooker or an extra forward on the bench. And I think we decided that an extra forward on the bench was better because the hooker position seemed a bit too tough to pick. Yeah. But it just depends who your hooking options are, right? Like yeah. if you've got Coruscant and you're debating over playing like Coruscant or like a, I don't know. Can I can't blank. Like can a good? No, I'm, I'm trying to compare a hooker to a, to a, oh, to a prop. Oh, sorry. Like you got Payne Haas yeah. and you got and you got Coruscant, yeah. Um, and and Tigers have a have a decent matchup, which is hard for them given that they're not yeah. a decent side. Yeah. And Harry, and you've got Haas carrying a bit of an injury. You could see Haas playing maybe fifty minutes. His output would still be good, but if Appy's got a good attacking game, you'd rather play that extra hooker. Yeah. Um, it really does come down to the week. It comes down to the week and who they're versing and what players. So, if you've got a question like this, whoever asked this question as well, just next week. Make it more specific around what players you want us to, to compare yeah. and we can provide our advice. But my, my personal opinion would be dependent on the matchup, where do you think there's more upside coming from? Mm. Do you think that the forwards that you've got in your squad have more of a chance to score points? If you do, just back them every day of the week. Yeah. Agreed. Would you agree? I agree. Next question. How many pods? We're speaking about pods a lot, so yeah. I'm glad there's a question here. How many pods should we be running? Yeah. So for those who don't know, do you want to explain a pod? Well, a player that's... Different. Yeah, just a player of difference. So not your typical – so we spoke about Nico a lot, so I'll use him as an example. Most people would have Nico Hines in their squad yeah. um, and Harry Grant like you touched on. So who's someone who's a bit different, who you don't think too many people would own or have in their squad, but they'll still score great points this week? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. I think that there's definitely the difference between, you know, top and leaderboards and – And forward. finishing yeah, where, if, where you finish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, I would say it, it'd be tough to have – I'd say it's tough to have more than three because you need to have the top tier players in every position. Yeah. Nearly in every position. I'd say no more than five. I'm looking at it from a perspective of like you can have your bench yeah. or pods yeah, That's and fill out your, your starting squad um, as all the superstars. Just because you might get a matchup like, for example – um, and I don't mean to be harping on about the Sharks. I'm trying to look at the – I'll look at the matchups quickly to see if there's another example we could use where we think there might be a, a points. Okay, Cowboys up against the Dragons. Cowboys have attacked really well this season so yeah. far. Um, w- would you say in a game like that and, and in the Sharks game, you'd rather have pods – you'd rather have five players that come from the Sharks and the Cowboys given that they've got an easier matchup in terms of scoring points? Yeah. So you go for some attacking players you might not usually have in your squad, but you're like, oh, based off their matchup this week, not everyone will have them, but they're likely to score well. 100%. So that's when you'd go for it. But if you have over five and, you know, one or two pods won't work out, then it's like, damn, I just wasted yeah. my time, my money, my effort, where I could have just gone with the basic players that everyone else had. They may have got a bang on average score, but that average score still would have been higher than what my pods got. I th- yeah, I think you just give it to a, as little as possible, well, you know, then anyway, less risk. Let's yeah. just get involved. You're guaranteed the points. And if your players do hit, then you top top that round. All right. So you're saying three. I'm saying five. If you want to settle in the middle, go for four. <laughs> uh, next question. Which two fullbacks have the best matchups to be playing this weekend? Which two fullbacks? Yeah. Uh, I think I think Scott Drinkwater is in for a field. Samey. And just quietly, I've got Drinkwater in my squad. Oh. He hasn't had a great... Match up yet. Yeah, he hasn't really kicked off yet. He's he hasn't just, scored a try. I don't think he's even assisted anything. No, he hasn't he? done much at all. I mean, I think this is the match for him. This is start. the match. Like, we don't see drinking quiet for too long. Um, yeah, I reckon he probably will top in all the fullbacks because it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty close right now. And it's, un- it's unlike him to not perform. Yeah, so I reckon he'll have a flyer of a week and he'll score a lot of points. Who else are you going with? 
you know, are we all going to say Reese Walsh, but up against the Penrith Panthers, it's hard. It's I mean, hard, A lot man. of people are going to have him in their squad this week as well. Yeah, I don't blame week. them. But this is where you have to look at the round coming and you have to see who they're versing. You know, no Adam Reynolds, as you said. It's tough. It's it is tough. tough. Will he get the ball as much? Will there be more responsibility on him? Will he stand up and be like, look, I mean, my half's gone, my captain's gone. He could, he could go one of two ways, but what won't change will be Penrith's defence. 100%. So I think Walsh gets kept to pretty quiet. I'm hoping Teddy goes big, but I'd probably just go drink water to be safe and would you go Pappenhausen again? Like Pappenhausen's losing, like he's, there's no Munster and no... Yeah, I mean, yeah. No Hughes, like, would you go Pappy? More rel- same same situation as Reese Walsh. It's kind of a risk play. You got to pick what your you, what you think is going to happen in that game. So that's where that's where your coaching and your yeah. sk- your coaching skills come into hand here and affects your squad. So uh, it's a hard choice. I don't want to say who you should pick, but the, definitely, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon Pappy now is the top three this week. All right. Last question, Josh, you answer this one alone just simply because this plays in your squad. Uh, do we play Haas this week with his niggling knee injury? Yeah, this, this has been in the back of my mind. Or oh, it's going to be in the back of my mind for the rest of the week as well. Uh, I say yes because if he's named to start, I think he's fine. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't risk one of their best players, you know. I mean, they would, but they wouldn't in terms of if it's that bad. So yeah. I guess I reckon I reckon he'll get through it, and even if he's playing fifty five minutes, sixty minutes, it's enough. Especially in a in a tight game where he's making, you know, he's running, he's running hard, he's making tackles, might get an offload here and there. You know, he won't he won't get many, he won't get any live breaks probably, but it's just the consistent points, fifty plus. Especially if you have a special card, you know. Yeah, why it's, not? It's de- definitely a. It's a grand final rematch. If he wasn't yeah. up to it, it's a long season. Kevin Walters wouldn't have picked him. Most definitely not. He would not have picked him. So I'm going to say, yes, stick with Payne Haas. And, yeah. What if he – just a quick question here. What if he ends up playing 50 minutes? He would have a really big, like, a really big effort in that 50 minutes, which means points will flow. Yeah, fair so, enough. Yeah, I think, yeah, he, he, he uh, will score by 50 nearly every round if, he, if he's playing. And if you want to replace him, you're going to need a better forward than him. Are there too many better forwards than him in the game? Not right now. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's jump into our our transfer market and then the prediction to wrap things up. Transfer market touched on as a Sharks player. Could you pick who it is? Hilton, mate, spot on, Josh. That's mine as well. No way. <laughs> Josh has been hiding Sharks plays from me ever since that comment. Teague Wilton, transfer market. So we both got him. He got one try, one try assist, yeah. one line break assist, one line break himself last week. So yeah, two two good attacking plays and ended up scoring sixty two points. Didn't have a world of work to do in defense. Yeah. But I feel like with Nicara out um, and targeting Galvin, obviously young mm. Tigers 5'8", uh, I'm pretty sure Wilton will be in for, I wouldn't say a field day, but a lot of reliability is going to come on him being the the starting back rower there yeah. with Nicara out. Um, well, they're obviously both starting back rowers, but there'd be more pressure on him given his experience. I think he could score well. Um, I know a lot of the times we focus on attack when we speak about game day yeah. squad points rather than yeah. defense, but it's because we're looking at the players who can provide you with the attacking upside that it, that'll get you over the line. Mm. No, yeah, I agree. He just looks very dangerous, silky with the ball. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, maybe that first round didn't look convincing, but come back, back from injury. Yeah. Bounce back from injury. I've always loved Wilson in, in, a, in my squad. And yeah, he's just someone that maybe not, like if you were to get him, probably this week. Yeah, <laughs> just and that's what we're touching on yeah. being like one of the pods that you want. This is a pod for this week. Yeah, definitely because not many players will have him right now. Yeah, you have to so. go, out, go out and buy him or pack him if you're lucky. So, yeah, well, stay tuned on our TikTok as well. We'll be yeah. uh, posting our pack pack openings. Yeah, interesting prediction. Sean Johnson over sixty had a shocker last week. Over sixty. First, yep, first round was good. It's up against Canberra, who were two and zero. But it's like they're back in Christchurch. They're in front of their home crowd. If they don't turn it up and they go 0-3, it's a shocking start. And for them to get the win this week, I think he goes over 60 because he's got to be on in attack. Wow. Okay. I, I Yeah, I agree with you there. Awesome. Well, mine, Yeah. you, you touched on it earlier, Jesse Ramian. I'm playing a gold card. And a gold Ramian. Like it's not – for most centers, you know, they're not going to score big points, let's say. You know, our kicker. But I'm going to say he scores 80 plus. 80 as plus? As a gold. As a gold. As a gold. Okay. 
But, you know, I'm looking for tackle breaks. You know, not only just the tries, just tackle breaks. He's so hard to tackle. I reckon if he can notch up 10 tackle breaks, which I think he can. In a game like this, he can do it. And that that's my prediction. Fair enough, Josh. I uh, I don't blame you there. Best of luck. Well, we're 1-1, one, so I'll shake your hand yeah. on that. Yeah. And we'll see how we go long with season, our squad. It's a, it, it is a long season, but um, they're here to watch. Round three, looking forward to it. We've got some great matchups. Um, check out our Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok yeah, yeah. at Sportshed TV as well. We'll be posting a lot of content during the uh, the rugby league season. But um, that's another episode of the Game Day Squad Rugby League Show. Any closing words? No, nah, mate. Just go the doggies and and go the roosters. Go, the, go my Game Day Squad. Yeah. Right. Well, Okay, it's 1-1, one, one, so we'll, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Good luck, everyone. Keep your questions flying through. Like, subscribe, comment, and, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be doing this all season long, so keen to hear your thoughts. See you.